My name's Noel Conway, full name. Uh, I'm with Release Outdoors. I'm actually part owner now. We kind of restructured some stuff here recently, so it's pretty exciting. Uh, we got a lot of cool stuff going on, so really looking forward to this year. It's going to be a big year for all of us, so looking. When did uh, Released Outdoors start? And They and started is two and a half years ago, two okay. maybe three years ago. I could be wrong on the timeline. I'm new to Released. I actually joined within the last year. So okay. I had worked in the outdoor industry with another company, actually based here out of Nixa, Modern Outdoor Media. I worked with them. Oh, for really? Quite, yeah, I worked with Wes and those guys for quite a while. Okay. Um, mostly centered towards the fishing industry. So we were trying to get our foot in the door for the hunting industry. I had some other opportunities open up, and I ended up leaving. Awesome job. Awesome guy. Really appreciated the opportunities that I got there. Um, and then actually met these guys through ATA. So Okay. Um, yeah. met them in person. They've been following us and liking some of our stuff, messaging us. And I uh, was at ATA with another guy who worked at Modern, and we ran into him and started talking, really hit it off, liked all the guys. They all kind of had, like, the same attitude towards the outdoor industry as us and just really vibed pretty well. And so, and they're yeah. from, like, Kansas. Kansas, and in then, like, Montana. it goes all the way to, like, yeah. Montana or <laughs> yeah, something. They're, they're all over the place. And they've – so that's what's really cool is, like, right there in Kansas where they're at is in the Flint Hills. It's okay. the most amazing deer hunting I've ever seen in my life. I have never gone somewhere, and every tree row have 160-inch deer in it. It's insane. Wow. It, it was insane. Like, we got th- my first day ever hunting there with these guys. I had yet to meet them since ATA. It had been, like, a year. I joined the page. We show up. And it's like I worked all day, drove all night, got there at 4 a.m., and we're going to go deer hunt. It's Veterans Day, like November 11th, it is the day to go. You know, it's like the best yeah. day of the year. And uh, I've heard that or like October 31st, I've yeah. also heard. Oh, yeah. Those great. those two days, those two. <laughs> you, vacation day if I'm not off. Like, you, I am not going to be at work. Like, there's just no chance. And uh, this is one of those days. It was like cold front coming in. It was the coldest it's been in a long time. It got down to like negative 10 that morning. Yeah. Right in the rut in the Flint Hills and Kansas. Like, couldn't have asked for a better morning. Five minutes after daylight, 164 inch deer walks out 17 yards and they smoke it. It was awesome. Like, it was just like you couldn't draw it up any better. Like, we, I get there at four in the morning, we're drawing up plans. He's like, he's going to walk down this trail right at daylight. Like, called it everything, get there, it happens. I'm like, this is stupid. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've been hunting for two months and haven't even seen a deer this big. Yeah, uh, some something like that will really spoil you too. It, it, it ruined me. <laughs> and it's like now I, I like today. I spent all day putting in food plots. I don't even want to hunt Missouri. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I spent all this time putting in food plots, doing cameras, taking inventory of deer. I don't want to hunt Missouri. <laughs> like, I'm just thinking Kansas. It's just in the back of my mind. I'm texting those guys. You guys seen any velvet deer yet? Yeah. How's it looking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's just insane. And like. We shoot that deer, ended up being a high shot, didn't find him. He killed him a couple days later. Same stand, same trail, same scenario, everything. Really? Pretty cool. Yeah, it was really cool. It was a cool story. Um, we leave to go, like, just take a breather, get breakfast, kind of uh-huh. gather our thoughts. 160-inch deer at the gate when we're leaving. Like, this is a deer he's got on camera, just giant. We've actually, he found the deadhead to it this year during shed season. Yeah, this sucked, but giant Dang. and it's just every road we went down there was just a giant deer stand there i'm just drooling they're just driving like nothing's going on like they're used to it I'm like this is stupid <laughs> we need to go hunt kansas <laughs> that's like on our list yeah and we just keep putting it off we're gonna go next year and see i was the same way i was always like i'm not gonna spend that much on a white tail tag mm-hmm. i can hunt missouri it's like if i'm gonna spend that much on a tag mule deer antelope elk like i'm getting out there and then after going there, I'm like, I'll spend that much on a white tail tag. <laughs> All right. I'm like looking for leases. I'm looking like it's yeah, Dang. it's crazy. You remember how much the tag was? Uh, six hundred and something, six eighty, okay. I think. Sure. Maybe that's the Montana mule deer tag. I don't remember, but it's it's in the six hundreds. It's like right up there. It's like five hundred and something, then a hundred dollar hunting license. So yeah, over six hundred bucks. It's expensive. That puts me out this year. Yeah, <laughs> it's expensive. Well, the draw already happened this year. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, it I, ended April 28th. I have a point that I'm just waiting to cash <laughs> in on just because I was like, I know I've heard like 
even without a point, you're almost guaranteed to draw. I, th- yeah. I heard the success rate is like close to 80%, yeah. I think. Uh, so I'm like, I could, I could put in and, you know, have a good chance, but I put in, got the point. So now I'm like, I'm guaranteed whenever <laughs> I want. So now yeah. it's just pulling the trigger on that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's there's a lot of really really good public out there. It's insane. Like, we we were turkey hunting some public ground. Really, like, whenever I went out there, there's, it's insane out there. Like, you don't think it. Like, you drive through it and you see nothing, but then you take the time to like just pull off of the highway and go in a couple little spots. It's just loaded with wildlife. It's crazy. Huh. It's really really cool. That's what uh John B was saying. He's a buddy of ours. That- uh, we went and hunted with in Nebraska last year. Okay. And he was saying he hunts Kansas, and he's like, you know, you'll just pull up to a field, and you won't see anything, and then you'll start, like, walking back to your stand almost, and all of a sudden there are 20 deer running in front of you. Yep. And he's just like, it's yep. the most insane thing. He's like, you're not even in, like, near a wooded area. Yep. They're just in the fields. Yeah. I'm it, like, okay, that's like, something a, I want to try. A drainage ditch with overgrown grass, there's deer in it. Like, it's insane. Like well, I, I, so I had never deer hunted Kansas before this last fall, and I wasn't even hunting. I was just there with the camera, but I pheasant hunted it before. And so you walk in those Milo fields and then mm-hmm. kick up those like little brush patches, thinking you're going to see pheasant. Now oh, there's a giant buck standing up. <laughs> it's like what is what is going on out here? And there's it. You wouldn't. I mean, I don't know. It's just like there's nothing out there. There's a lot of crops and stuff, but mm-hmm. uh, it's it's insane how big those deer can get. It's really pretty cool. So before we get too far along, I definitely want to hear more about released outdoors, but I want to get a a little bit of your hunting background, just how you started, when you started, that kind of stuff. So I've been hunting for as long as I can remember. I have got video clips on VHS from whenever I was three years old in a deer stand, like wrapped up in a blanket, sitting there watching my grandpa hunt. Like I've been doing it my whole life, so... It's really the only thing I've ever known. Like, it's it's not a hobby. It's my life. Like, that's what yeah. I do. Everything I do is centered around hunting. So, I've just, I love it. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do without it. So, you grow up hunting with family? Uh, my grandpa, yeah. And uh, my brother did a little bit, and now they've both kind of backed off. Now I'm, like, the only one that does it in my family, which sucks because I don't really have anybody to hunt with, but it's awesome because I have all of the spots to myself and no competition. <laughs> so it's like, it's been kind of cool, but kind of sucks at the same time. I'm trying to get them all back into it. I'm trying, I've been talking to my brother about getting him a bow and having him come bow hunt with me this year. Cause I killed a couple big deer the last few years. So it's like, all right, now I got mine out of the way. I, yeah. I got that chip off my shoulder. You know, it's like mm-hmm. I had that mark. I wanted to hit a certain deer score. I got it. It's like, all right, now I can kind of relax a little bit. Yeah. Austin and I, we've, always kind of shared spots and probably always will. Yeah. But last year it sort of worked out well because he shot his velvet buck opening day, opening mm-hmm. weekend. Opening day. Opening day, yeah. And so he couldn't shoot another buck yeah. for a couple months basically. <laughs> yeah. So he was going with me and filming and I was going with him filming. Yeah. And I will say, you know, we could have killed more deer probably had we split up, but yeah. it was a lot of fun just yeah. going and filming and being yeah. with someone. That that part is a lot of fun, yeah. too. and that's why I was, like, amped to go out to Kansas and film with those guys because, like, I got some buddies, like, around here that hunt, but not, like, a lot of them are pretty serious about it, you know, and, like, those guys are all in. Like, they're the same as me. It's 365. Like, there is not an off season. Like, you are hunting. And uh, it was pretty cool. It's, it was cool to go out there and have that same kind of mindset with those guys running around. So I think you mentioned it already. How did you get connected with those guys? So I was working with that other media company. Um, we decided to try and step into the hunting industry, really heavy in the fishing. They're dominating the fishing industry. Uh, but wanted to kind of do more in hunting because we're all outdoorsmen. Like mm-hmm. fishing was work, hunting was fun. And we are like, why not make – hunting kind of work too because if we're going to be doing it we might as well get paid to do it yeah and uh, so we started working kind of finding some avenues into that went to ata i mean you go to the hunting shows to start building your client base and uh, those the release guys have been following us for a while interacting with all of our content and stuff like that and they messaged me while i was out there like hey we're at i don't even remember the booth number but we're at this booth stop by i was like all right these guys have been talking to me for couple months now why don't we stop by and say hey and Mm -hmm. just instantly hit off with these guys just a bunch of really good dudes down to earth and it was cool it was was really cool and then I ended up leaving uh modern the following year 
and I had stayed in contact with these guys and like, hey, would you want to help us out with some content and stuff? Like, yeah, sure. I'm still doing it. Like, I'm doing it for fun. Like, why not? I can help you guys fill in the gaps and kind of stepped up and started doing more and more and more. And now it's just snowballing. The, we're, we've got a lot of plans for this year. We're really excited about so. Are these plans you can share, or are they plans that are coming? Some of them I can. One of them I'm not going to share. It's going to be a surprise, once-in-a-lifetime kind of thing. So we're keeping it pretty quiet. It has to be like a caribou hunt in Alaska or something. No, it, it's, <laughs> it's even harder than that. So it's, it's yeah, it, it is a true once-in-a-lifetime. Like Dang. Once you do it, you never do it again. Okay. Um, so it'll be pretty cool. It'll be pretty cool. We're uh, obviously Kansas, Missouri, talking Nebraska, because – it's right there. Yeah, it's yeah. over the counter. We all have spots out there, so and it's, it's it's a lot cheaper than some of the other places. Like we went up there, forty two dollars. Is it? It's yeah. less this year yeah. than archery tag is two hundred forty two bucks. Wow, because last year it was two eighty five. I think something like that. Yeah, maybe the antelope tag is two forty two. I don't remember. I thought they were the same price. So they, they may be. have came down. They might. That, be. I don't know. I've been doing all my research because yeah. I'm trying to figure out where I'm going, where I'm going to have a camera, where I'm going to have a bow, and all that kind of stuff. Um. Working on Montana, obviously. We got mm-hmm. our guy up there in Montana. He runs Western Timberline Outfitters. So he okay. works with a lot of big name people. Uh, does a lot of cool stuff. I mean, yeah. that dude hunts more than I do. He's every day. Dang. And he's killed a lot of big deer. He had a record year last year. I mean, it was a, a bull over 340, uh, multiple mule deer yeah. in the 160s, multiple whitetail in the 160s. Like, Dude killed it last year. Yeah, and for real. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna kind of lean in on some of that. We didn't really do anything with it last year, just because I mean I didn't know him yet. I was yeah. still new. Uh, was trying to play with my vacation time and stuff. But now, like the position I'm in, I I can take off whenever I want. We're gonna we're gonna hit it hard this fall. That's awesome. So yeah, it'll be pretty cool. That'll be fun. I uh, you know, like I told you, I think we before we started recording, I'm going to elk hunt. Yeah. in Colorado. And I'm pumped for that, and I think Trevin may be tagging along, and he mentioned that he may record for for yeah. us. He's either going to record or try to get on, like, a deer or some, something yeah. that, uh, if we can work it out for, like, an over-the-counter unit. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm pumped for that. So I can't imagine, like, how excited you are for all of that yeah. and, you Dude, know, Col- going out there. Colorado was my first elk hunt. That was two years ago, and it was awesome. Like, yeah. It, it was slow during the day. It got so hot. Like yeah. They, they weren't really running a whole lot. Like, you'd see them, like, first thing in the morning. But at night, you couldn't sleep. They were bugling all over the place. Like you could hear, just hear bugle after bugle. And they get, like, 40, 50 yards away from your tent. Like, you could hear them out there. It was crazy. It sounded like dinosaurs running around. It was awesome. That, honestly, I don't really, you know, I'm going out with the expectation that I'm not going to kill one. Yeah. You know, I want to kill one, but... Yeah. The success rate being what it is yeah. and the pressure, I just want that experience where yeah. I, you know, can't sleep one night because we have elk all around us, you know, yeah. hearing them all night and, you know, they're getting within, you know, 30, 40 yards of our tents yeah. and we're going, oh man, tomorrow morning could be a really yeah. good morning. And that's the thing, like, we'd wake up in the morning and we'd see them and we were hiking, so we were dumb. We camped on the top of the mountain and would hike down every day and then go down in this nasty canyon. It'd take us all day to cross this thing, and those elk were crossing it in 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And it was like, what the crap? Like, we both looked at each other that morning. We are like, how are we supposed to keep up with these things? Like, they're covering the canyon that in five minutes. Like, that's all day for us. Yeah. And then we'd have to do the hike of shame all the way back up every day. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it, it was – it got – pretty cool there for a couple days like at the end of the trip it just kept getting colder and colder and colder yeah the cold front was moving in the following week it was like everybody said the rut just fired off oh and it was like oh, of course but yeah. it was it was really cool like you could tell like at night like it was just getting better and better and better because that first night we were sitting there and i was like i think i heard a bugle he's like no you're just you're losing it and then we heard another one like no that was a bugle they're pretty far off and by the end of the week it was like they were in our tent it sounded Man. like it was awesome. We're like, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> One, so it sounds like you went from like you would you had a base camp and you'd just go out every day and come back. Yeah. One thing that we're planning to do and hoping to do is like as soon as we leave, if we have to set up camp, you know, we're setting up camp and we're gonna follow them. And that's one yeah. thing. Uh, are you familiar with the bow spider? Yep. So 
I ran into that guy at the TAC event I was just at and talked okay. to him, and he said, you know, have a base camp, but as soon as you leave, as soon as you get on the elk, don't come back till you kill one. Yep. And I was like, all right, well, yep. that'll be my plan then. And see, that's where we messed up. We uh, we even talked about that. We're like, after the first couple of days, we are like, we should probably just start stuffing our sleeping bags and our mm-hmm. packs. And, like, if we get on them in the bottom of the canyon, we stay in the bottom of the canyon. Yeah. Like, It'll suck for a night, but it would be really cool if we kill an elk. But then at the same time, we were both talking every day. We're like, if we kill one, what are we going to do? Yeah. Like, how do we get it out of here? We could barely get our empty packs out of here. Right. How are we going to get this 1,500-pound animal out of here? (laughs) Like, what are we going to do? There's just two of us. (laughs) Right. Luckily, uh, we'll have, like, I think a group of five or six, depending on people that come. So it'll be like, all right, everyone to the bottom of the canyon. We have an elk. (laughs) You know, and another thing is I'm going out there and we're going to have so many tags. Yeah. That I'm like, one thing the bow spider guy was telling me is, you know, if you're willing to shoot a cow and you get the shot first day, Take don't pass it. it. Take it. So I'm like, we all made right. that mistake. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Oh. We first night. So we get there and we drove all night long. We I do a lot of this all night driving. I like to maximize my own Absolutely. Time. I will drive all night. I do not care. And uh, so we drove all night, got there, and that first evening we dropped down in the canyon, kind of saw this little area that looked like a good little meadow. We're like, we'll go down there, just sit, call for a little bit, see if something strikes up. We didn't really expect anything. Four cows came in to like 40 yards. Oh, wow. And we're like, this is how it's going to be tonight. Like, (laughs) we've got another 13 days of this. Like, this is going to be awesome. And then by day 12, we're like, we should have just shot that cow the first night. (laughs) Why? We could have been home. Four days ago. (laughs) (laughs) So you kind of mentioned, um, you know, you're going to be on the camera, going to be hunting some. Mm -hmm. What, uh, so far, what does your fall look like as, you know, with just that schedule, uh, with what you can share? Yeah. uh, What will you be hunting? What will you be kind of going to kind of just tag along on the hunt and record it? So tag along hunts right now, Kansas. I'm going to mm-hmm. go out there and film Kansas, uh, possibly Nebraska. That'll be like a tag long slash have a tag kind of thing. Yeah. But my tag comes second. I always put my tag second. I, I'm there to film. I'm there to get the moment, you know. I mean, that's I enjoy the camera more than I enjoy the gun or the bow. Like, that's just yeah. how I've always been. Um, Montana, shooting for antelope, mule deer. Colorado, shooting for mule deer, possibly elk. And Idaho, depending on how that all works out. Because he didn't draw, looking at over-the-counter tag. He's going to yeah. do some scouting before he decides gotcha. if that's the route he's going to go. Um, and then, I mean, I could share the other one. The other one's going to be Utah. It's okay. going to be Henry Mountain's bison tag. Gotcha. It has been acquired. It is drawn. Wow. And it is a once-in-a-lifetime tag. So That'll be awesome. It'll be pretty cool. I'm not going to say who drew the tag. I will tell you it was not me. It was not me. (laughs) If it was me, the world would know already. (laughs) I'd have been posting about it. I'd have been screaming it from the rooftops. Not me. I've been putting in for it for a long time, and not me. I want to draw one of those moose tags. Yeah. The once in a lifetime moose. That's what I want. Shiris moose. Mm -hmm. That'd be freaking cool. I want to draw one of those in Montana, and I want to. I I will put in for bighorn sheep, Missouri breaks for the rest of my life. Probably never draw it. Might draw it when I'm 90 years old, but if I, if it happens, it happens. <laughs> I'm gonna keep putting in for it because there's still a chance. There's always a chance. Yeah. You uh, mentioned that you prefer filming. I'm mm-hmm. curious why that is. I I have my own reasons after filming just a couple hunts this year and a couple of them <laughs> just with my phone. But I'm curious to hear what your take is because you've done a lot of it. Yeah. So I just like capturing that moment. I mean, I I think it's cool. I like being the one that can pull it up and be like, look at this. I was able to film this. Like, uh, It seems like nowadays, and a lot of people are filming and stuff now, but like anybody can go out there and shoot something. But going out there and filming it, you got to have a lot more patience. It takes a lot of – it. You, you almost just get unlucky, it feels like, mm-hmm. because, you know, you might move the camera wrong. You know, I always yeah. say, like, I'm killing the animal before I get – you know, before the camera and yep. before all that. But, you know, there are still times. It, it, it's just different. It adds yeah. another aspect. And that's one thing that made it easy with us. Was that your first deer I recorded? I think that was the coolest thing, kind of how you were saying, is 
uh, the first deer he ever killed with his bow, I was there recording it and you know, he'd been shooting all summer and I'm, I'm always, I've always been the one that I'm like 60 yards. I'll shoot. Yeah. He was like, you know, I'm not shooting that far. This deer was at like 51, 52 yards. And I'm like, come on, get closer, get closer. And he goes, all right, I'm shooting. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so I like have the camera. He sends one and I hear the impact. I see it go through. He didn't get as good of a view of it. And he had the Luminoc on mm-hmm. that it looked like just how it hit and stuff. It looked like his arrow went over the back. So I'm going, dude, you got it. You got it. <laughs> And he's going, no, I missed. I missed. <laughs> and we were able to pull up that video, and, and I was able to zoom in and go, look, there is a hole in this deer as yeah. it runs away. You yeah. hit it. And sure enough, you know, we walked up the hill and found it. You know, it was still alive, but it, was, it wasn't it was going anywhere. Yeah. It, was, it was a fatal hit. Yeah. And, you know, I think the coolest part about that story and why recording is so fun is because you get to relive those moments. Even, Absolutely. Even though – there were times where I recorded hunts where I wasn't the one that shot something. Yeah. I was still there. I still experienced a lot of the same emotions yeah. that Austin did, for example, or he did when he was recording me. Yeah. And even this year, six months later, I'm looking back at that video. We were just texting about it yeah. like a week ago and like, this is so awesome. Yeah. You know, we, I can't believe you have this video. And the, I shot a buck this year and I, uh, got it mounted. I got a year amount of it and it's my best buck so far yeah. and it was a really cool experience but i it's the only deer out of the three that i killed this year i don't have a video of <laughs> and it's just like man i really yeah. wish i had that video just so i could relive it yeah. re rewatch it i've got it hanging up but i wish i had something a little bit more yeah and i've always said the camera gives me more tags like That's it's open true. it's opened a lot of opportunities it's let me go like this henry mountains thing like yeah if i didn't have a camera why would i go you know what i mean yeah um it's it's opened up a lot of doors and let me go do a lot of cool stuff, see a lot of cool stuff. So. How are you getting connected with people to to film? Social media, man. It is. I mean, it's kind of starting to slow down, and it's algorithms change, stuff changes, what they want you to post changes, all that kind of stuff. Um, they're starting to be very liberal platforms now, so it's a lot harder for outdoor industry brands to grow on that. But I mean. That's a lot of it comes through social media. Just having a professional page with pictures that I think I, I enjoy. I think they're good. I post them on my page. That's why I like them. And uh, just stuff like that, man. I mean, that's where a lot of my connections came from, social media. Did you get, like, a degree or anything? Like, what? how would you get into filming? <laughs> so it was completely off the wall. Um, <laughs> yeah, Love it. Yeah. So I was in med school. I have okay. a cell and molecular <laughs> biology degree. Like, has absolutely nothing to do with what I do now. It, it's a piece of paper that sits on my desk and do, does nothing for me. Um, I was in college, always loved photography, worked at Bass Pro going through college, hated that job, met some of the best people in the world there. Met Trevin through that place. Like, I just, I've met a ton of awesome people through that place. And uh, so, like, I was working there. And met the connection for Wes. And he's like, hey, man. He's like, a couple of guys have told me you like photography. I've seen some of your stuff. Would you want to come and try and do some stuff with me? I was like, yeah, sure. Sounds fun. So we did a float trip here in Nixa just to kind of see if I could cut it and get what he was kind of looking for. Handed me his camera, all of his gear. He's like, I'm just going to fish. You just do your thing. Like, all right, cool. Like, I'd never handled a camera this nice before. And uh, just went out and had a blast. And hmm. he's like, yeah, you could probably do some stuff with me. You want to, you want a job? I was like, doing what? He's like, photography. Like, sure. <laughs> and that's really, that's how it started, man. It's cool. literally friend, like word of mouth, friend of a friend kind of thing. Got into it. I'd always liked it. Like I had a cheap little Nikon camera. I was always taking pictures. Um, we'd go hunt. My buddies would be like, why are you taking your camera? I, like, I don't know. I like it. It's fun. Yeah. And that was before like any of us were really like, we should film our hunts or anything like that you know it's just mm -hmm. i just want to do it because i enjoyed it i like being able to flip through on my phone and be like oh that was a cool picture like remember whenever you shot this deer and stuff like that i mean it's just it's just cool and then yeah. always did it and then kind of grew that skill through college just as like a hobby and then it just became kind of like what i wanted to do as soon as i started working with wes i was like yeah this is this is what i want to do like this is awesome hmm. <laughs> 
That's just crazy. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was thinking you, you know, probably went like something broadcast or something. And nope. That's awesome. Nope. And, and honestly, like. Cheap camera and YouTube, man. That's how I learned everything I know. I think here's <laughs> a good point for you to uh, share your social medias because, guys, like, he has a, like, honestly is making me want to do better with ours just because every time I see, like, anything from release or anything from uh, your personal page, I'm like, dang, that's a sweet picture. <laughs> uh, especially with the turkey ones you've been posting. So why don't you share kind of I, where people can find you? Yeah, so I'm really mostly on Instagram. Uh, as far as myself, I have my Instagram page. It's just Noel underscore Conway. Uh, Released Outdoors, we're on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and we're starting YouTube. That's kind of what this whole fall is centered around. All these hunts are going to be put into episodes, and I'm going to film, produce, edit, all this stuff, and pump it out to YouTube and start doing all that. So, right on. Yeah, really looking forward to doing that. Sweet. And how do you spell your name? N-O-E-L. Yeah, it's That's a little right. different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you guys look it up, uh, you won't find it spelling it the way you might think. Yep. And, you know, I have a confession. It was pretty funny, but... I was so confused. We we were trying to set something up recording with you and Trevin. Yeah. I I was like, that is not Trevin's wife. Like, who is who is this? Like, we're going to record with Trevin and this this girl and like it made no sense. And then got to talk and he's like, Yeah, Noel. And I was like, Wait, what? It's not well. So I'm yeah. sure you get that all the time. All but the time. It's a cool name, yeah. but not how I would think it'd be spelled at all. Yeah. So. No. Not, my parents really wanted me to be tough, I guess. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's the only thing I can guess. <laughs> now you're all the now you're in the outdoor or in the woods all the time and killing deer and it's pretty good. Yeah. It works. Yeah, it works. <laughs> it works. <laughs> so let's let's talk about your turkey season. Because right. we've talked about deer and elk, but I have a feeling you're I mean, you're wearing a turkey shirt, so Yeah. Where do you fall on the scale of like how much you love turkey, like zero to like Trevin. Trevin. You can't put it on a scale. <laughs> <laughs> you can't put it on a scale. Me and Trevin are nuts, man. <laughs> you put two of us together and give us a turkey tag and a gun between the two of us, something is going to die. <laughs> like it's just, it, I don't know what, but something's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> so just walk us through your turkey season. Um I know you had success. I know you went out with the camera quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, what did this turkey season look like for you? This turkey season was a mess. <laughs> it was a mess. Um, kind of just threw plans at the wall and saw what stuck. Uh, didn't really make any, like, definitive plans other than the Kansas guys were going to come to Missouri the last week of April. That was the only plan that I had. Everything else, I was just winging it. <laughs> Almost went up north to go hunt Merriam's. Uh, at the end of the year, it, at the end of May, mm-hmm. not going to do that. Ended up not – I'm going to do that next year. Next year okay. – so next year, I'm planning all of my trips are going to be around a turkey tour. I'm going to try and do a single-season slam next year. Okay. See if I can't kill all four. That's I've something killed, I've always wanted to it, try. Yeah. But yeah. as you can tell, my turkey hunting uh, success rate hey, is not got, high right you now. you got to so. start somewhere, man. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. But, yeah, this turkey season um, – I was going back and forth between, like, Nebraska, Kansas, maybe going up to South Dakota. Like, I was just looking at, like, a bunch of different states and just kind of looking at a map. I was like, all right, what can I make work with my weekends off and doing this? Mm-hmm. And uh, obviously wanted to go to Kansas to hunt with the guys. So that was the first plan. And what I was going to do was Nebraska season opened on, like, the 14th, or their archery season was open. And then Kansas shotgun season opened, like, two days after that. And then Missouri's opened two days after that. So it's like... I'd go to Nebraska and kill a Merriam's, go to Kansas and kill a Rio, and go to Missouri and kill an Eastern, all in, like, the span of, like, five days. And I was going to try that, but then Nebraska did their tag limit this year, Mm -hmm. sold out of tags before I bought mine. And I was in the process of making this plan, and I was like, I'm going to do it. And got on there, I was like, there's no more tags. When did this happen? (laughs) (laughs) So that didn't happen. So I ended up going to Kansas, uh, their opening weekend, and the birds were – I've never hunted Rios before, so I'm, I have killed a lot of turkeys, all been in Missouri. Mm-hmm. I just, I love turkey hunting Easterns, and so I was expecting to hunt hard-headed, not wanting to talk, not wanting to come in birds. That was not the case. 
<laughs> These things gobbled their heads off. They were dumb. They were so dumb. They come across roads. They come across fences. They fly across rivers. It's like I'd never seen anything like it. And then I ended up screwing up. So we got on this group of birds like this last evening. Mm-hmm. And I've been being picky. I had like this first year Tom come in, eight inch beard, five yards, literally five <laughs> yards, like right in front of us. And they're like, "You want to shoot it?" No. <laughs> Like I'll, there's, I've seen the other birds that are in this place. Nah, they're, they're, I'll shoot a bigger one. And then I had another, like right after that bird, I had a tom come out like 40 yards, huge bird in some brush. And I'm shooting a 410. I was yeah. like, I don't know if I want to try that <laughs> shot. <laughs> so I didn't. And then I regretted it the whole time because I ended up killing my Missouri birds at a really, really long range with that 410, mm. which made me realize I could have killed that slammer tom in Kansas. So we go to this property. We are, it's, Pouring rain, hailing, just terrible. We're sitting in the truck. I'm not getting out on this. Like I like <laughs> killing turkeys, but turkeys don't like this weather. I don't like this weather. And uh, it th- all of a sudden just stops, clears up, sun's shining. We look out in the field. There's strutters walking up. Like, what? <laughs> it's just like th- it was just like the light was shining down out of the clouds onto these birds. It was just like and it's the last evening. I was like, this is just like a holy grail moment. Like of all right, well, I was like, we're gonna kill them. Like. There it is. That's our sign. <laughs> so we get out of the truck, run down this cedar row, and you can't see it. You're standing it up. You know how cedars are. You can't see anything through them. Mm-hmm. But if you get down at the bottom of them, you can see through, through clear as day. Yeah. So I'm crawling on my belly with a fan in front of me, calling. These toms are gobbling, looking at us, going in a strut, coming out of strut, going in a strut, coming out of strut. They're still like 100 yards away. And they turn around and start walking away. And I think they got spooked. Like they kind of see us because there's two of us and one little Jake fan. With two adult men trying to hide behind this while we're <laughs> it's filming, not gonna work very and well. <laughs> yeah, it didn't. It just wasn't working. And they turn around and start taking off. And I looked at Lucas. It's like we gotta go. And so we just haul butt down this cedar <laughs> row. They're on one side. We're on the other side. They're out in a wheat field. We're just in this timber thicket, running down this hill. And we get down to the bottom, and they kind of stopped. And there's one big cedar tree in between us and them. We kind of see them walking in between it. And all of a sudden, you hear them putt like they're scared. And I looked at Lucas. And like I'm running around this tree. I'm shooting the first redhead that I see. Ran around the tree, literally from me to you guys. There's one right there. Shot, went down, starts flopping. I'm hollering, hooping, hollering. We're all excited. Rolls over. Has the smallest bearded Jake I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like, I could not have shot a sm- It was hatched that spring. Like, I, it, he's just make. they were, he's like, it's, it's all, it's all good. You don't have to feel bad about shooting a Jake. I was like, I've never shot a Jake before. Ooh. Ever, <laughs> and my first Rio was a Jake. I got humbled real quick out there because I was I, all weekend. I was like, "These birds are stupid." We, I mean, I was passing on good birds, like mm-hmm. birds I probably should have shot. It's like these birds are dumb. Why? <laughs> like, I'm gonna wait for a giant because they're just yeah. every single one's coming into a call. No, not hmm. the case. We need to go hunt other birds other than <laughs> these stupid Easterns. Apparently. Easterns are the most hard-headed birds, and that goes into my next week of turkey hunting. So I hunted that whole week before the Kansas guys were coming up. Mm-hmm. And I was staying – I had some really good spots. I was staying out of them because I wanted to get them on the spots where some of these birds were grouped up. They were bigger groups there. If we mm-hmm. busted one, we could get on another one. Yeah. Like, I was trying to stay out of those spots. So I went and just started knocking on doors, getting permission. Yeah. Never done that before. Just – Decided, you know what? I've seen a lot of turkeys. I'm just going to go ask for permission. And if I get permission, that's where I'll hunt. I ended up getting permission on a couple really good farms and hunted for like a whole week. And I thought I was a decent turkey hunter. And I was texting Trevin the whole time. It's like, dude, I don't know what I'm doing. (laughs) I can't get them to gobble. I can't get one to come into decoys. They'll go out in the middle of the field and just sit there and look at me. And I just spent a whole like weekend hunting Rios that were. You pop a fan up and they come running. And it's like, so now I'm like trying to use that same, I'm in that same mindset of like, I, these birds should just be coming in. And <laughs> I was just getting my butt kicked. Ended up going out to one of my farms. There was this big brush pile where they had cleared out some trees. And I'm like, they've been strutting up here on this power line. I'm just going to walk up there, see what I can see. Mm-hmm. I was like, sometimes they're up there. So I was like, I'll get behind this brush pile. And if they're there, maybe I'll get a shot. I pop up there, and I just see one in full strut right on the other side of the brush pile. I was like, this is going to work. I was like, I'm finally going to get a shot at one. Like, I've never had to hunt this hard to try and kill a turkey. Yeah. And uh, I do a couple putts. He gobbles, cock the hammer on the 410, shoot, 
He looked a lot closer than he was. I ranged him, walked him off, everything. 63 yards with a 410. With a 410? With a 410. Dropped him. Didn't wow. flop, didn't move, nothing. Stone dead. Wow. And I mean, it messed him up. His head was all sorts of messed up. It was really, I was impressed. So I'm That's a believer in that thing now. At 63 <laughs> yeah. yards. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a believer in that thing. It was pretty cool. It was a pretty cool experience. I didn't know a 410 could shoot that. I didn't either. I didn't, and like I said, he looked a whole lot closer whenever he was out there strutting and gobbling. I was like, oh, that bird's 35, 40 yards away. Are you shooting TSS? Yeah. Okay. That that explains it a little bit yeah. more. That, that TSS is nasty. Yeah, it is. That stuff is nasty. I shot, um, is it in there? No, it's not. I shot a 567. Uh, that blend? Yeah, it was a blend. Yeah. And with my 12 gauge and when I was just kind of patterning it, I was like, I wonder how far I can like actually just hit something. Mm -hmm. And I went out to, I think it was 80 yards and just sent one. And I had holes all over this little target that I set up. And I was like 80 yards. Okay. (laughs) That's pretty cool. Now it wouldn't have killed the bird because there was so few like holes. Like it was, there were holes all up over, but it wasn't enough to really just just takes one BB. That's true, but just takes one. It's not ethical. It, it was it was spread <laughs> yeah. out. It, it just That's it wouldn't have been good thing to do. Yeah, but <laughs> I was like, full TSS would would do yeah. this plus some. Yeah, I could probably hit a bird. At, I would say full TSS could probably hit one at a hundred yards. Yeah, that that TSS is nasty. It's it's insane. And what's cool about it is like with your traditional lead shot, most of your turkey loads are like four and five shot. Mm-hmm. That TSS. I don't know what it is about that tungsten, but you can shoot a nine shot and get the same kinetic energy as a four or five shot with yeah. twice as many pellets. So it's it's crazy. It's pretty cool stuff. I I can justify you know like doing that for turkey because you don't shoot as much. I will never shoot TSS for waterfowl. Have you heard of people doing that? Yeah, I I'm knew like, exactly where you're going with that. How never? Like these guys have to be made of money to do that. I suck too bad to right. do that. Like I'm, I'm, I, I suck too bad at that to be able to shoot, start throwing TSA. It'll take me a whole box of shells to kill a goose, man. Oh yeah, these bigger Canadas, they don't like to die. No, I got lucky on this one that's hanging behind me. It came in. We were actually cleaning up, and where I was, that's I the was, best time to hunt, right? I was right off the Mississippi on mm. uh, my great uncle's land. And we have, he has this little pond there. We hadn't seen a duck, a goose all day. And we're, you know, packing up our guns and stuff, and we hear some honks. And we're just like, <laughs> wait a second. So we get, you know, we get all back ready, and these three come in, circle us once, and then come lock up and just come straight at us. And I'm sitting there waiting for someone to say, all right, take them. <laughs> and they get to, like, just off the water 10 yards from us. And I'm like, all right, I'm shooting. I just <laughs> I dropped this one. The other two hop up, and we drop both of them. You know, all of us unloaded our guns on them because yeah. you know if you don't shoot all day, <laughs> duck hunting, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna <laughs> shoot something. And yeah, it was. Uh, luckily, I got you know one shot at this guy, and he yeah. was done. But the other the other two took a couple shots oh, before yeah. they dropped. They always do. I, 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 maybe it's just me. I can't ever kill them on the first shot, ever. Where do you, uh, where do you go waterfowl hunting? So I do a lot up at Truman, a lot up at okay. Stockton. Uh, I got some farm ponds around here that I mm-hmm. hunt, and then I've got a uh, some crop fields out west that yeah. I go hunt quite a okay. bit. Okay. So. Yeah, that's one thing I've wanted to get into here, but I'm also hesitant to because I grew up duck hunting on the Mississippi. Yeah, it's going to be totally so, different. Yeah. <laughs> But I do, I was talking with Brian, another one of our friends, uh, this weekend. We were floating and fishing at Lake Springfield. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me that parts of the James, you can actually just, you could float that and hunt. And I'm like, oh, I'm totally going to do that this year. Just get like the mount for my kayak for my shotgun. Yep. Put my gun there and just float and see what happens. So I've, I've hunted, it's not the James River, it's Spring River out towards Mount Vernon. Okay. Same sort of thing. It, it runs through several of our properties, and I've hunted it. And we've had some really good luck. I love it whenever it floods. 
floods up into those cornfields. Oh yeah. And I've so I've never had like a field hunt for ducks before. I've done it for geese and stuff, but never for ducks. And we got on a hunt this year in Mount Vernon in a wheat field where mallards were literally landing on us. Like it was just they were coming out of the woodwork just everywhere. It was insane. It looked like a Kansas hunt in Mount Vernon, Missouri. Mount Vernon. Like that doesn't happen. No. That doesn't ever happen. Southwest Missouri is notoriously bad for waterfowl. Yeah. So that's and it was that's pretty good. Yeah. I've got some videos that would blow your guys' mind for Southwest Missouri. Every like mm-hmm. this last year whenever we got all that, that crazy freeze, every all the ponds and mm-hmm. everything froze up. That river running through that cornfield. Still flowing. That's what I've heard. birds all over it. It got stupid. It got real stupid there for a few days. Hmm. Well, we're definitely going to have to do that, too. <laughs> You're just adding to my list of what I'm going to hunt this fall. It's like, hmm. And I'm also thinking, like, all right, I have a good camera now. Who wants to have someone video them on a... And no. that's the thing, man. <laughs> you can get into waterfowl. Like, if you got a camera... All those waterfowl guys are always wanting photos and videos of it. Hmm. Go out there because they want pictures of their dogs, pictures of their kids and stuff like that. Go out there, take some pictures, and they're like, all right, put the camera down, grab a gun. It's like, you ain't got to tell me twice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I That's would happened a lot. Do that. Yeah. Hmm. All right, so that just adds to my list yeah. of more things. <laughs> I'm out of questions right now. <laughs> So I, I should have wrote made notes. <laughs> As we're kind of getting to the end, um, what has been your favorite hunt that you've filmed? I oh, mean, is man. there one that stands out and it it's just the one that you always think about, you refer to? I don't know if I have any single one. Um I've got several. So the Colorado Elk Hunt was awesome. It was just a whole special thing. Um my buddy, it's where his family actually grew up. His grandparents were from there. His grandfather had passed a few months before we went. So we're hunting the mountain range in their backyard. So, like, we oh, stopped cool. at the house, talked to them, went and hunted. It was just, like, a really emotional hunt. Like, it was his first elk hunt, my first elk hunt. All that had happened. It was, like, him coming back there. It was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, that was, And we didn't kill anything, and we had a, a great time. He actually ended up winning the Levi Morgan bow giveaway while we were on the mountain. And so we had been on the mountain for like several days and we were just getting tired. And we were like, dude, we got to go into town and eat some real food. Like, <laughs> I'm tired of this stuff. Like, mm-hmm. we got to eat something real. Like, we'd just been getting our butts kicked. Got in the truck, got down the mountain and got service. And it was the last day for him to respond to be able to claim the prize for it. We're, he's like, this is a scam. Like, you ought to call him just to be sure. Like, you never know. And the answer, like, yeah, dude, you won. And it's like, this is the Huey Man giveaway. Like, we got a bunch of stuff for you. It's an address. And I just look at him and we're like, what the crap? What? <laughs> like, it just, it took, we were at like this super low point in the hunt because we've been getting our butts kicked and just put us right back on top. And then got some awesome Mexican food, went back up on the mountain, <laughs> and we were ready for like the next seven days. It was awesome. Um, that one was just, it was a really special hunt. Mm-hmm. It was really cool. Um, and then I've had so many for like first turkey hunts. I love those. Yep. Those are awesome. You get, like, those birds that work in. I've got one that I filmed. It was whenever I first started filming. It was before I started working with Wes or any of this. It's like, i just gotten this camera. A buddy wanted to go kill a turkey. It was actually during COVID. Uh, i just gotten a new camera. So, no school, no work. We're all at home. It's turkey season. So, you guys know what I was doing every day. Yep. <laughs> I was turkey hunting every single day. I was taking anybody who wanted to go turkey hunting. And uh, this one guy's like, yeah, I've never killed a turkey. I'd like to go. And it picture perfect. They came in spitting and drumming the whole way in, came under a fence, came around, like did everything Easterns aren't supposed to do, (laughs) and then came in, started flogging the decoys, gobbling the decoys. They're like five yards from this guy. He's up in front of me. I'm back. Like just the way the setup happened, they were on the neighbor's property, and I walked up to the fence and just called, and they gobbled. And so I stepped back like 50 yards down this ridge, called again. They gobbled way closer. And so I just kind of walked back down to where we were at, called, and they were, like, coming. Like, they were already across the fence. I was like, they're right where I was just standing. So I just sat down, turned the camera on. Next thing you know, you just see two red heads just come into view. I mean, it's just picture perfect. I love that hunt just because they did everything they're not supposed to do. <laughs> and it was just, there was a creek, there was a fence. They, it was the last week of turkey season. They never act like that the last week of turkey season. They've been called at. They've been hunted. They've been shot at. 
and they did everything perfect. This is why I hate turkey. Like, yeah. Stories they, like this. It's like, why can't they do that every time? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, that's how I felt this year. It was like, this year I didn't have any of them, like, really come into the decoys mm-hmm. and put on a show. They yeah. would. I filmed them, put on a show 100 yards out in oh, this yeah. field. I had, like, nine of them strutting around me and another guy just go, doing circles out in front of us. Wouldn't come in. But, like, and then I see everybody else have them in the decoys flogging. I was like, what, how'd you do that? Yeah. <laughs> Teach me. <laughs> what are what are you doing that I'm not doing? <laughs> it's just the Southwest Missouri yeah, birds. I mean, yeah. that's what it is. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. They're just hard headed, stubborn birds. And I think I think here, and I could be wrong, but I think here they're hit pretty hard, like hunted they, almost harder than yeah. anywhere else in the state. It yeah. feels like they they get hunted hard down here. They I do. I hear more shots, um, turkey hunting. Than I do deer hunting. Yeah, like during rifle season. Everybody down is, here deer or turkey hunts. It's Everybody surprising here, turkey because hunts. everywhere else it's yeah. kind of the opposite. Yeah, like it's like going out to Kansas and like even going up north in northern Missouri and stuff. Like I can knock on the door and ask for permission. Yeah, hey, sure, go shoot a turkey. It's like yeah. down here, it's like no. Yeah, <laughs> those are our turkeys. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was just asking. Right. So we're kind of getting uh, to the end of our time here. Yeah. Um, we do this sex or this segment called "Around Our Campfire," okay, uh, where it's just kind of that last bit of inf- or uh, advice information yeah, that you would yeah. share with. Um, let's go, maybe a new turkey hunter. What would you tell you know, or what do you tell the new turkey hunters that you take out? Oh man, I could show them what not to do. I'm <laughs> real good at that. <laughs> it's like a trial and error process. And Don't that's, do what I that's, do. <laughs> that and that's really what I tell them, like. Don't be afraid to try something different. Um, mix up your calls, mix up your runs, sequ- like just, I mean, what you're doing. I mean, mm-hmm. don't get, I'm real bad and Trevin's real bad. We are not patient when it comes to turkeys. Sometimes it works, sometimes it does not work. Um, we don't, I don't sit very long for turkey season, for, for turkeys. Like deer season, I'll sit all day, dark to dark for one deer. And I will wait in a spot that, if I'm going to see a deer, it's going to be the deer I'm hunting. I may not see another deer the whole day, and I'll do that for weeks on end. Mm-hmm. Turkey hunting, if they're not gobbling and in my lap within 20 minutes, I'm gone. Yeah. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm bad about that. I am not patient with birds. Yeah, and, and like, there's some certain, like, circumstances where I am. But yeah. um, I just always be ready to move on them. That's one thing I see a lot of people mess up on is they sit there and the birds are going, hanging up out in the field, and they're starting to work to where they're going to go for the afternoon. And you're like, what should we do? Should we sit here and wait? No. No. Go after them. Like, don't – just follow your gut. Don't be afraid to get aggressive, especially on Easterns, because you got to be aggressive on Easterns. Yeah. They're not dumb. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> I wish we had the dumb birds here. <laughs> I really do. Oh, my gosh. I hate turkey. I'm just going to end with that. That's going to yeah. be the last thing I say. I hate turkey. Yeah, I think, I, I don't like how everybody gets like this, like, there's like this mindset around like reaping turkeys. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this, like, either you're all in on it or everybody hates it. It's kind of like the crossbow compound bow debate, yeah. like, you're either all in or you hate it. And uh, I think for a new turkey hunter trying to get into those experiences and kind of get some birds under their belt and stuff, don't be afraid to try it. Try some different tactics. Mm-hmm. I've reaped birds. It's not my favorite way to do it. I like calling them in, but I've reaped birds. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, don't, I, I don't like people shooting down ideas for new people. I mean, you just got to try stuff, see what works for you. Yeah, that makes sense. That <laughs> awkward look between Cam and I when we're like, who's going to say the next part? But yeah, I, I definitely, I kind of fall in that category of, you know, do what you have to do to kill a bird. Like, if mm-hmm. it's going to work out better that, you know, you're going to reap the bird, reap the dang bird. Yeah. If it works better that you sit on these decoys and, you know, wait 30 minutes for it to make its way across the field, do that. You yeah. know, do what you have to do to kill the bird. And the hard thing for me is figuring out what I have to do to kill the bird. <laughs> yeah. Because I've tried just about everything. I've tried, you know, they'll be heading away and I'm like, well, maybe if I throw a fan up and I throw a fan up and they're heading away even faster, yeah. and, you know. It's that trial and error that yeah. you were talking about, yeah. and I think that's good advice just for any form of hunting. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I take it back to that elk hunt, you know, for you where you were going down, coming up, you know, 
you, learned our now you now you've learned, <laughs> yeah. and now when you go back out there, it's like you know we may still do that, but you know we're also going to be ready to chase them down into the canyon and yeah. and kill one there. So I think that's really good advice. Yeah, I'd always be mobile. That's like the big thing, even with deer. Like a lot of people mm-hmm. aren't mobile, and that you see this like thing coming out with saddle hunting now. It's like you can move anywhere. You can mm-hmm. go anywhere. Um, I've got a buddy who killed a deer. He bumped him out of his primary bedding area, killed him in a secondary bedding area because he bumped him, pulled his whole setup, went to that other spot, set up, killed him that night. Like, yep. 170 inch deer. Like it, it, it's it, being able to be mobile and move around and stuff. And that kind of goes against like what a lot of people will tell you, like sit still, be patient. Mm-hmm. I, I'm bad about that. <laughs> <don't>, yeah. <laughs> I've got too much ADHD to sit still and be patient, <laughs> man. Like I, I want it now. <laughs> so, yeah. And I think too, you know, I'm thinking about um, a buddy that I work with, and he took me out hunting this year, uh, turkey hunting, and his dad is really traditional, and as far as turkey hunting goes, where he's sitting in a blind and sitting all day, yeah. and it cracks me up because his son, the guy I work with, is like, yeah, he's an awful turkey hunter. Like, <laughs> he doesn't get it, but I've told him a thousand times, like, you need to get up and move, and probably... In our one hunt, we got closer to a bird because we were walking around pretty much all morning than he did yeah. the entire three weeks, you yeah. know. And Austin and I, we had we had situations too where we were aggressive, ended up biting us. Oh, yeah. We had other situations there though where if we'd been a little bit pa- more patient, we would have had a shot too. So there, there's definitely like a balance there. Yeah, there and is. That was one of the hardest things that we learned this year was, yeah. okay, when are we going to be aggressive? When should we just sit for an extra hour, sit till 11 or 12 yep. instead of getting out at 9, 30 or 10 and moving because we've seen birds in this one spot, yep. you know? And part of it's just, like you said, getting out there, trying stuff and seeing what works. And one thing I've noticed, especially in this part of the state where the birds do get hammered a lot, every group of birds is different. Mm -hmm. They all do different things. I've got some properties where they go up in the timber all afternoon and they won't talk. They won't do anything. They're just eating. I've got other properties where they're going to strut their butts off in the middle of a cornfield all day long. Yep. And so it's just kind of knowing what they're going to do. And that's why I like to stay mobile. Like me and Trevin, we always say like, we don't need all this stuff to kill a turkey. A call, a gun, and sometimes a decoy. But even then, like I've killed a lot of birds just cutting them off, sitting down and calling them down a logging road or something like that. I like shooting them up in the timber. I like calling them in. They like to come and investigate. I called one across a river this year in Missouri, like a week before season. I just went out to go scout. Yeah. These birds were out in this cornfield across the river, and I was up in this timber. I was like, I wonder if I could get them close. There's an opening. I have my camera. I was like, I can get some pictures of them strutting. They came running across this field, flew across this river, and were in my lap, like Dang. 12 yards. I was like, this isn't going to happen when no. I'm turkey season comes around is like I got four days and they're not going to be doing this. <laughs> it's like, yep, this like, is not going to happen. Yeah, I, I just used all my luck right then. That's <laughs> that's what happened. But yeah, I mean, just trial and error, learning. Mm-hmm. I mean, the only way you're going to learn a turkey is just by screwing it up. Yep. I've learned more by not killing them than I have by killing them. And even still, you're going to screw it up. Yeah. Even when you think you know, that's that's one of the things you know. Killed one last year. I came into this season going, I know what I'm going to do. And it completely changed from last season yeah. even. So I think that's really good advice. And, and yeah, I think that's a good good note to uh, end on. And I really just want to thank you for being yeah, on tonight. Absolutely. Coming in person, that's awesome. Yeah. We yeah. always love having guys in yeah. person. It seems to uh, flow a little better. Yeah. You know, we don't for have sure. that lag and stuff. <laughs> but we definitely really appreciate you being on. And, you know, it's nice to meet local guys. Yeah. And just outdoorsmen and women. Yeah to, you know, connect with. And, you know, there have been a lot of people who we've got to connect with and then, you know, we'll go hunt or go fish with them. So we look forward to, you know, hitting the rivers this summer. And then, you know, who knows if you're, we're going to go hunt. If we have some time this fall, fall. (laughs) maybe we can make it down with Trevin to Oklahoma because he's telling me there are some big deer down there too. He's got some big deer down there. He's got some really big deer down there. We'll have to go. I I know he'll listen to this, so we'll have to go show him how to kill those big deer because he has not been successful he doing needs, that. <laughs> he needs to come out with a Beatty hat or shirt that says, you want to leave? That's our tagline. <laughs> we'll sit for 15 minutes, look at each other. 
You want to leave? You want to leave? <laughs> we go to the next spot. <laughs> that's that's our go-to line. We say that more than anything whenever we're turkey hunting. Want to leave? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But we'll uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this episode yeah. up, guys. If you uh, enjoyed this episode, make sure you leave a rating or review. That helps our uh, podcast get out to more people so they can learn how to turkey hunt. You know, this helped us learn more about turkey hunting, uh, and I'm sure it'll help other people. So. Uh, With that, we'll wrap this up. Uh, Don't forget, all it takes is just one.